Hi, and welcome to the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast. I'm your host, Tegan Thompson. I'm a book lover, a chocoholic, and an INTJ living in a world filled with extroverts. I made this podcast to share my experiences and struggles as an introverted perfectionist and to bring the inner workings of an introvert's mind to introverts and extroverts alike. So grab a cup of tea and get comfortable. It's time to unmute. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast. I can't believe it's already February. So crazy. Um, But since it's the start of February, I'm going to give a quick plug for Black History Month. Um, And that's because it's not taught very well. And by it, I mean Black History. It's just not taught very well in schools or anywhere in general, the workplace. And I think it's so important to learn about whether you are of black descent or not. Um, I think everyone can learn about it. Um, It's so important to note that black history is not just slavery. I actually just saw this quote that a Jamaican poet had said, and he said, uh, slavery is not black history slavery interrupted black history and i think that was just so like monumental because i guess i never really thought about it that way i like always knew it i just never like thought about it you know um and that's coming from someone who is of black descent and i don't know what other people know or think about it so yeah slavery is definitely not the only component to black history. Um, it's actually very small. There's so much stuff out there that um, black people have done in the world to advance things and just it's so amazing and so fun and important to learn about. Um, kind of continuing on that note, uh, I think it's really important to know that black history is not separate from history uh it's not its own category it's not like there's history and there's black history um i think why it's called black history and black history month is to highlight things that are often not brought to the surface we're taught um so i think that's so important and yeah so that's just my quick little plug for black history month Uh, So this week, we'll kind of be talking about the neural differences between introverts and extroverts. And these are the differences in the way that the brain functions in both introverts and extroverts, which contribute to the differences in personality and preferences between the two uh, groups. Uh, Because of this, because it's kind of going to be a little more sciencey and maybe a little harder to understand. I'm going to try to make this episode shorter uh, just to make it a little more digestible. Uh, Obviously, I encourage you to go look things up on your own if it intrigues you uh, because there's so much more information out there. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to start with kind of some of the basics. I majored in neuroscience so like this stuff is right up my alley i love this kind of stuff i love to learn about this stuff (laughs) i have to like take a step back and be like oh yeah people most people don't like know like just the basic general stuff that is involved in neuroscience um so i'm gonna just very generally break that down for you um so there's neurons and neurons are a type of cell that make up the large majority of your nervous system, both your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. Uh, So your brain, your spinal cord, and all the nerves that branch from there into your hands and feet and legs and arms that give you all the sensations that you feel. Um, And these neurons communicate by releasing neurotransmitters 
and neurotransmitters are simply just a molecule. There's so many different types of them. I'm not going to go into that type of detail. Um, but yeah, so one neuron is going to release a molecule, a neurotransmitter actually releases a lot, but for the sake of this, we'll say it's one and that neurotransmitter travels to the next neuron where it binds to a receptor and that's how they communicate. Um, and if you can imagine like a string of neurons where one is sending neurotransmitters to the next one and then that one sends neurotransmitters to the next one so that you continue this communication and you can create infinite pathways with this process. Um, so for this episode, we're going to focus specifically on the neurotransmitters called dopamine and acetylcholine. Um, so let's focus on do dopamine first. Um, with dopamine, I want to make note actually first that dopamine and acetylcholine are in everybody's bodies in equal amounts. No one is lacking or having more of between introverts and extroverts. I mean, obviously there are people who have um, diseases and stuff that change that, but for a normally developing human, they're going to have the same amount no matter whether they're an introvert or an extrovert. Okay? So that being said, um, with dopamine, Extroverts are actually less sensitive to dopamine and they rely more on dopamine to create kind of this feeling of reward that I'll get into in just a second. Whereas introverts are more sensitive to dopamine. And by sensitive, I mean this. Um, so how I just talked about neurotransmitters going from one neuron to the next if someone is less sensitive, they require more of that neurotransmitter to bind to the next neuron in order to activate it and continue to send a signal. Whereas if you're more sensitive, you are going to need less of that neurotransmitter to bind and activate that pathway. I hope that makes sense. Um, so that being said, there is a specific pathway called the dopaminergic pathway and it's also known as the reward pathway this is the very classic reward pathway that kind of induces signals of pleasure and enjoyment for a particular activity that one is participating in um, more specifically this pathway is shorter and it involves brain regions that regulate your senses, such as your taste and sound and sight, touch and smell. And all of these things are kind of external, so they're going to create this feeling of an external reward. You know, if I hear a sound that I really like, like a new song I listen to, and it pleases me, that's an external reward. And that's kind of what this um, reward pathway does with dopamine. Uh, because of this, this explains why extroverts enjoy socializing so much more than introverts, because interacting with people, you're able to talk to them, which is sound, you're able to see them, sight, um, you're able to, uh, often you can smell um, the things around you or sometimes people are wearing perfume or cologne and you can smell that and these activate these senses that um, like create this feeling of immense pleasure and since extroverts are more dependent on dopamine and this pathway they're going to get more pleasure from these external rewards. Whereas introverts, they're more sensitive to dopamine 
and they rely less on this pathway so they are actually going to get overstimulated by these things and it's going to feel um, less pleasurable they're going to enjoy it less um, so moving on to acetylcholine introverts rely more on acetylcholine instead of dopamine and acetylcholine is another reward like neurotransmitter that creates these feelings of pleasure and enjoyment However, acetylcholine is involved in a different pathway um, called the acetylcholine pathway. And in contrast to the dopamine pathway, this is a longer pathway that includes brain regions that are involved in regulating things such as empathy, uh, your words and speech, judgment and memory. And all of these things are more um, internal and going to induce a more internal reward feeling. Um, and because of this, this explains why introverts overthink so much, right? Because this longer pathway means that it takes longer and it has to travel further in order to process. So it's going to take longer to process things. Um, it also explains why they kind of enjoy being in solitude more because you're able to kind of process your feelings and your thinking, um, reflect on memories and stuff like that while you're alone. It's harder to do those things when you're surrounded by a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of noises and, and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of dopamine and acetylcholine. And then really quickly i found something really cool while i was searching up information for this episode is that there's actually a study that found that um when introverts and extroverts are presented with um faces or inanimate objects right so they put these people into groups whether they were introverts or extroverts and then they said, okay, we're going to have you look at these different pictures. And the pictures were either faces or inanimate objects like a book or glasses or TV or something like that. Um, and what they found was that the introvert's brain levels, when presented with these two categories, did not change. They were similar Um and so there's no significant difference between them. Whereas extroverts had greater um, brain activity when presented with the faces. And this kind of just continues to show that there's kind of this neural thing going on that explains why introverts kind of have this lack of pleasure from interacting with people um, why they don't enjoy socializing as much because they don't get that enjoyment and pleasure from seeing a human face as much as extroverts do. So I know that was kind of a lot of information and you know if you need to go back and listen to it go back to, and listen to it or go and search this information up on your own if you're more interested. It's definitely interesting to see how people's brains work in different ways and how that contributes to our personality. Uh, so that's really fun and I enjoy learning about that. So thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, if you learned anything new, please go share it with a friend. And as always, have a good weekend and I look forward to seeing you again next week on the Heart of a Perfectionist podcast.